Hi, welcome along to Arsenal Fan TV. I thought I'd put this video together today to talk about the traumatic but ultimately successful summer transfer window. Wow, what a window. <laughs> it all started when the season finished and Ivan Gazidis came out and told the whole world that at long last, after many years, Arsenal finally had money to spend. He came out, he said, listen, we've got £70 million plus to spend. And if we find the right type of player out there, we will spend that money. And loads of gooners got excited and we were like, yes, at last, we're going to go after marquee players. Well, actually, I'll say loads of gooners got excited. Many of us were still sceptical, we like, yeah, all right. You're still going to probably spend £10 million here and a little cheap hose there. But let's wait and see what happens. First thing they did as well, which was really good, is they started offloading all the dead wood. They got rid of Arshavin, they got rid of players like Shamak, they got rid of Yohan Dejuru. Lots of the players that had been at Arsenal and basically had not been successful, Arsenal shipped them all out. So we were all like, yes, it's looking good. They, they, they're really going well. Then came the what everybody thought was going to be the real, real big deal for the summer. Gonzalo Higuain. We were linked with him. He said he was happy to come to us. His dad said he wanted to come to us. His brother said he wanted to come to us. Real Madrid were prepared to sell. What could go wrong? We were all like, yes, at last, we're going to get ourselves a world-class striker who can bang in those goals. Argentinian international. Everything was looking good. Then all of a sudden, it just started going funny. We apparently made an offer of 23 million pounds. Real Madrid changed their minds and said, actually, we want about 26 million. We divvered, we messed about. We were like, no, we were playing hardball. Then what happened? Napoli comes along. They're fresh with a load of money. They'd sold Edison Cavani. They had 55 million pounds in the bank to spend. They come in, make an offer for over 30 million. Arsenal are unwilling to match that offer and Gonzalo Higuain ends up at Napoli. It was just, fans were just flabbergasted. We just couldn't believe it. How did we manage to miss out on finally getting ourselves a real world-class player and boof, he's gone to Napoli. And fans were just so distraught about the whole thing. Now, I remember after, a little bit after that, we interviewed um, Tim Payton from the, the AST. And he appealed to the fans and he said, listen, have patience, patience. We're going to make these big signings. Everybody just needs to be patient. He even, even had out on his um, Twitter site, he put out hashtag patience, which kind of became sort of like um, a motto for the summer. And fans were being patient, but being Arsenal fans, we were waking up every morning and we're like, oh, who's it? Who are we going to get? Who are we going to get? Because we were linked to everybody. We were linked to Rooney. We were linked to... Listen, just about any player going in the transfer market, for lady, everybody, we were linked to them. And we get up and we'd be on the computer and we'd look and we'd get the newspaper. we look and we oh, we who are we going to get? Who are we going to get? Then all of a sudden, Arsenal get linked to another major player, Luis Suarez. Now, I remember when I first heard that we were linked to Luis Suarez. I was like, nah, we ain't going in for Luis Suarez. Suarez, why would we go in for him? We're never, Liverpool never going to sell him. Plus, is he really going to want to come to us? I, I, I just couldn't believe it when I heard it. But then, true, they did. They moved in, £35 million pounds offer, a typical Arsenal, below the asking price. Liverpool knocked it back. Then came the infamous offer where Arsenal were told by the agents that there was a release clause that if you put in a bid of over £40 million, you would be able to get Luis Suarez because that would trigger his release clause and Luis Suarez would be free to talk to Arsenal. Suarez and his camp had already indicated to Arsenal that, listen, if that's done, we're up for it. We're up for coming to Arsenal. So Arsenal put in their bid £40 million plus £1. Now... What a big mistake that was. This was one of the biggest mistakes probably which they made in the transfer window. If you're going to make a bid to a club like Liverpool to get their best player, 
you can't put in 40 million plus a pound. It's like you're taking a piss, really, be honest. And Liverpool didn't take kindly to the bid. I mean, it would have been hard enough for them to sell it to their fans that we're selling our best players to a rival um, like Arsenal. But to say to their fans, we sold him plus a pound. Nah, they weren't going to have that. And they dug their heels in. There was the famous um, saying from John W. Henry, their owner, where he says, uh, oh, what are they smoking over there at the Emirates? <laughs> and to be honest, I had to wonder the same thing myself. It was a crazy bid. Suarez, as it turned out, didn't have a release clause, so that was all messed up as well. And uh, Liverpool dug their heels in, said they weren't going to sell him. And despite it looking at first that Suarez may push for the move, in the end, it came to nothing. Wasn't able to get Suarez. That deal fell through. And after that fell through, fans were, we were just distraught. We, were, we just saw target after target going to other clubs. And we were looking around and we were thinking, well, you know, who are we going to get? To make things worse... We looked across North London and we could see Spurs getting this money um, for Gareth Bale and doing loads of business. Soldado they bought, the Spanish international, 28 million. Um, Lamella, the, the up-and-coming Argentinian star, 30 million. Uh, Capoue, who was one of our targets, they bought him. And then in the meantime, what were we doing? I mean, we bought Yaya Sanogo, who, come on, he was... A prospect, under-20, did really well at the uh, under-20 championships, which France won, scored a few goals, but a very, very young and green player. And we brought back Matthew Flamini. After all the fans were crying out and saying, we need a defensive midfielder, we decided to go and get Matthew Flamini on a free transfer and bring him in. And fans were starting to really get frustrated with Arsenal's whole transfer policy. And then you had our opening game, against Aston Villa and we lost that game and fans, it just reached a crescendo and it was just a boiling point. And after the game, I interviewed some fans and one fan I interviewed in particular, Chris Hudson, he'd had enough. He'd had enough, he was fed up and he said what he had to say in this now famous viral video. What you saw there was the result of total incompetence by the board and the manager. And it couldn't have gone any worse. They've had 90 days to buy players. We've lost five players in one day. And due to their incompetence, there's a very good uh, chance for all that hard work we did trying to get fourth, it could blow it Wednesday night. And I'll tell you something, one of them, if not both of them, have got to go. And I've got a message to Tim Payton and John Cross and all you media lovies, get off your ass and start saying it as it is. And the message to the board, either fucking shape up or get out, because you've let all the fans down. You should be ashamed of yourself, Gazidis. I'm telling you, mate, you can't have £180 million in the bank and you're playing Cazula, who's just got off the plane from Ecuador and people are burning him because he's made a mistake. The reason he made the mistake, he shouldn't have been on the pitch in the first place because he's knackered. What is going on at this club? You've taken the pride out of it, Gazidis. Due to their incompetence, they will not be able to fill the team adequately on Wednesday night. And if they go out or lose 2 or 3 nil, I expect you, Wenger, and you, Gazidis, to end your resignation in. And Tim Payton, you can resign from the AST for speaking bollocks all summer. Well said, mate. Yeah, well I've well had a fucking nut. So, as you could see, fans were just... They were in uproar. They'd had enough... It was just looking so bad for Arsenal. They had a Champions League qualifier that if they didn't get through that, that would be it. It'd be a disaster. I mean, there was many fans calling for Wenger's head, calling for Gazidi's head, calling for everybody's head, right? For, to involve in Arsenal. Stan Kroenke, the old lot. Fans wanted them gone because they were so frustrated with the whole transfer policy of the summer. Thankfully... Arsenal, one thing you've got to give Arsene Wenger and the team credit for is that when their backs are against the wall, a bit like last year, they really come out fighting. And so they did against Fenerbahce. Beat them in both legs of the qualifier comprehensively, especially in the first game. That was really a tricky game to go away to Turkey. And we went there and beat them 
followed that up by beating them in the second leg. We also went away to Fulham and uh, beat Fulham, which again, a very, very tricky place to go. We went there and done the business against Fulham. Very good win. And then it was the big one. Tottenham Hotspurs, with all the money they've spent, £110 million from the bail money and all these superstars coming to play. Well, so they thought anyway. And Arsenal. Spurs in the North London derby and it got our season back on track again. And then after that game, Arsene Wenger gave a little cheeky interview where he said, listen, I've got to rush off because I've got some business to do. Then the next day, the rumours started spreading around. Now, first of all, rumours were going around that we were going to get Angel Di Maria, who is the winger, the plays on the wing for Real Madrid, would be a great signing. And I was thinking, yeah, Di Maria would be good. But then I started hearing these rumours about signing Mesut Ozil. I was like, Ozil? Nah, we never... Arsenal ain't going to spend that sort of money to get Ozil. Ozil ain't going to want to come to Arsenal. We've we, we just not made any of those type of signings since we signed Dennis Bergkamp. But as the day drew on and drew on on transfer deadline day, it started to become apparent that this could really happen. He had a medical um, over there in Germany for Arsenal. Rumours were going around that the deal was done. Now, I remember we went down outside the ground and we were there well, probably from about four o'clock and we was with the fans. Chris Hudson was there, loads of other fans and we were there waiting on tenter hooks. and in typical Arsenal fashion, they drew it right out to the last minute at about 10.30 at night, they announced it. Mesut Ozil is a gooner. Mesut Ozil had signed for Arsenal. I just couldn't believe it. After all the wait from May right back to... September, Arsenal had pulled off a major, major sign. And I mean, Mesut Ozil, considered by many to be one of the best midfielders in the world. Listen, even you, you, can, you can tell how big a player he is when Real Madrid fans, even though they got Bell, there was many of them unhappy, saying that they would have rather have kept Ozil. Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, saying that he's angry that Real Madrid had sold Mesut Ozil because Mesut Ozil's so good. We had got ourselves a world-class player. Fans couldn't believe it. Listen, Gazidis had taken a lot of stick. Wenger had taken a lot of stick. But we were happy that we'd beaten Spurs. We were happy with that signing. And the transfer window ended on a high. We even felt that we got one over Spurs because apparently Spurs had tried to get in contact with Real Madrid to try and stop the deal from going through. But they was unable to do that. And we still got our man. And I'm so looking forward to seeing Mesut Ozil playing at Arsenal. And I mean, it's just such a brilliant signing. And it's not only that. As some fans said outside um, the ground when we interviewed them on that Monday... It's a statement of intent for Arsenal. And I liked what Mesut Ozil said. He said, I came to Arsenal because I spoke to Arsene Wenger and he told me about the plans for the future. And that heartens me. That means to, shows me that we're looking to bring in players of that stature into the club. And Arsene Wenger has been saying for a long time, listen, we're going to have to hold him to his word. He said quite a while ago that I'm going to bring through a load of British players at this club. And we all thought, that was the times when we just used to have all foreign players. And we all thought, oh, yeah, all right, Alison. And he's done it. Oxlade Chamberlain, Jenkinson, Walcott. We've got loads of British. Jack Wilshire. Listen, the future of Britain, the future of the English football team is with Arsenal, right? Kieran Gibbs, you know, Ramsey. I know he's Welsh, but for, you know, so he's brought through that British core. He then said, I'm going to bring some top, top quality players to Arsenal, but only top quality. I'm not going to mess about. We'd seen the little pot signings in the past of Arshavins and Shamax and that. We were fed up with those signings. But by bringing in Mesut Ozil, he has now raised the bar. Who could be next coming in? Who are the next class players that are going to be coming in at Arsenal? That is what I'm thinking to myself. What is it that he said to Mesut Ozil that made Mesut Ozil come? Or should I say Mesut Ozil is the, the right, correct pronunciation. I need to start getting that right. What made Ozil come 
because he knows that Arsenal are now stepping to another level. So the window ended. We've got ourselves a world-class player. We've got ourselves a goalkeeper in uh, Viviano. I don't know much about him, but apparently he's a good um, signing, um, good goalkeeper. We got ourselves um, Flamini back. I had my doubts about it, but after seeing him playing in that first game against Tottenham Hotspur, he showed a lot of fight and he's definitely going to be a good addition. We didn't get a defender. We didn't get a striker. You never know, maybe in January we might go back in. Maybe in defence, we might not be too bad because Sanya has been admirable when he's covered as a centre-half. But one thing I do know about the window, we got ourselves a world-class player. It took a long, long time. I don't know if I could take another frustrating summer transfer window like that. I think next time I'd have to go away on holiday and lock myself off because waking up every day and going on my computer, it said, it drove me crazy. But I'm so happy to welcome to Arsenal Mesut Ozil, Flamini, Viviano, Sonogo. Let's go out there this season and challenge.